Mr. Ku, hello. Hello. Nice to have you here on the studio. Thank you very much. Um, you work for Nomura Research Institute, and for yes. many years you have been developing this uh, balance sheet recession concept and theory, explaining the state of the economy in basically all of the developed or rich countries. Yes, yes. Um, I would like to point to work on the Japanese case. Where do mm. we stand now? We have this incredible uh, quantitative easing developed by the BOJ since mm. 2013. A lot of money has been put out there, supposedly in the market, but we don't see growth picking up, we don't see CPI progressing. Right. Uh, why is it not working according to you? Why, why do companies, corporate, Japanese corporate, are not borrowing? Households also hesitate to borrow at the moment. What is happening at the moment? Well, <coughs> when I developed my concept of balance sheet recession, <coughs> That was to explain what happened after the bubble. You know, during the bubble, people tend to borrow lots of money. Mm. And once the bubble burst, asset prices collapse, liabilities remain, so you have a huge hold on your balance sheets. Mm. So everybody start paying down debt all at the same time. When you are in this situation, no matter how much central bank does in terms of lowering interest rates, adding reserves, nothing happens because these people cannot borrow money. They're technically bankrupt, mm. so banks cannot lend them money. And for them to actually grow, they have to remove this debt overhang as fast as possible. So during that period, there's no use for monetary policy. But if everybody's doing this all at the same time, you need government to be borrowing money. Because in the national economy, if someone is saving money or paying down debt, you have to have someone on the other side borrowing and spending money to keep the economy going. And so for the first 20 years or so, government borrowed the money, kept the economy going, kept the income from collapsing, so the private sector, the companies have money to pay down mm -hmm. debt. So in a 20 year period, uh, balance sheets were fully repaired. So Japanese corporate balance sheets are in very good shape mm -hmm. now. Why are they still not borrowing money? Yeah. That's the problem. Well, there's another reason why companies don't borrow money, and that is that if you invest in one of these emerging economies, say Philippines or Bangladesh or somewhere else, if the return there is higher than investing at home, the capitalism tells you that you're supposed to invest mm -hmm. over there, not at home. And that's basically the other reason why Japanese companies are mm -hmm. not investing at home. If you go to Southeast Asia, you see Japanese factories everywhere. Mm -hmm. But the ones at home are not growing because the ones over outside is making more mm -hmm. money. And so in a situation like this, household sector is still saving money. Japanese love to save money, well, French also, I understand, mm -hmm. because we worried about our own future. So mm -hmm. household sector is saving money, but the corporate sector that used to borrow that money yeah. are no longer doing it. And so we have a huge challenge in all the developed world as to what do you do with this household mm -hmm. savings? And I think government has to play a bigger role because monetary policy is not going to be very useful. But Japan government is borrowing a lot of money yes. and has been borrowing a lot of money. Uh, they don't, there's no real serious fiscal policy at the moment, so they keep on borrowing. We have a new stimulus package that yes. was just announced, the biggest one in four or five years. It's going to be paid or uh, expanded through 2020, maybe a bit of 2021. Is it useful money or are we talking about new roads uh, going nowhere or do you think they can turn this huge amount of money into something positive that would create long-term real growth? Well, when Japan fell into what I call balance sheet recession 30 years ago, no one understood this disease. Mm. There was not even a name for this kind of recession. Mm. So people thought, well, if, it's, if the government puts a lot of money quickly, but then you have a pump priming economy, mm -hmm. and then the economy will do okay. Well, every time they put the fiscal stimulus, of course, the economy responded. But once they removed the fiscal stimulus, it collapsed again. Yeah. Because asset prices in this country fell 87%, commercial real estate prices. Mm. If you have 87% decline in your assets, one or two years of repair, uh, paying down debt is not enough. Mm. It may take five, 10 years. If we knew that, at the beginning, I'm sure we would have picked better projects for long-term future mm -hmm. because we're gonna have to be doing this for 10 years. But at that time, no one knew. Oh, one or two years, bang, and the economy should be back on the mm -hmm. growth track. And the same thing was said in the United States also. 
when the Lehman crisis happened, people like Larry Summers says, oh, one big jolt is enough. Yeah. But then he realized that one big jolt is not enough. He has to have a sustained fiscal stimulus. So Japan made that mistake. So this time, I think people are becoming a lot more careful because now this is for the long term. Mm -hmm. So we have to pick our projects more carefully. And I hope that is true with the package that is coming out. But still, we don't have an institution to pick good projects. We need independent, independent institution, indep institution, not the BOJ and not the government. We That's have right. no immediate politics exactly. answer to give. Yeah. Just like we need an independent central bank before, mm. now we need an independent fiscal commission to make sure that the projects are good projects mm. because this is for the long term. Mm. And we don't have that institution yet. And so I'm afraid in the latest package, some of the things in there could be, you know. Roads going nowhere. Maybe. <laughs> you don't talk so much about the demographics of Japan because in France, the difference that we don't have in this balanced situation, we still make babies mm -hmm. and we still have every year more and more consumers and we have immigrants. For me, it seems that Japan has this huge issue of losing 800,000 consumers a year. So in the corporate, every company will tell you, I don't want to invest on the long term in Japan because I don't see where I'm going to sell my products mm -hmm. or who is going to work in my factories. It's, it's on top of the balanced sheet recession or is it part of it? Well, uh, demographics works very, very gradually, very, very slowly. Balance sheet recession happens on one day. Mm. When the stock market collapses, yes. real estate market collapses, next day you're in balance sheet recession. And all the economies, not just in Japan, but after 2008 in both Europe and United States, the economy suddenly went this. Mm. So this is definitely balance sheet recession, not demographics. But demographics will make it more difficult mm. at margin for economy to come out because as, as you said, well, there's not going to be any more Japanese left. Why, why should we invest yeah. at home? But in a globalized world that we are in now, the market is everywhere in the world. Mm. It's not limited to Japan. Mm -hmm. So workforce may be one key factor, that you don't have enough yeah. young people to work in uh, factories. Then you have to automate, you have to mm. do more investments to make sure you can overcome these uh, but if that, if that means more investment, so much the, so much the better for the economy. Uh, so demographics at margin, I'm sure, have some impact. But to explain what we are going through in Europe, in the United States, in Japan, strictly on demographics, I think it's not the way to go. If you were to be part of this uh, independent committee, we would select few key projects where we put public money for long-term growth prospects. Where would you invest? Where would you consider investing and in? Where would you tell the government to invest at the moment? Well, uh, I really don't want to get into the debate because then it becomes very political, but everywhere where you see consistent congestion, hmm. for example, this, this road from Tokyo to Osaka, the, the Tomei mm -hmm. Highway, mm -hmm. on the weekends, you know, it's, it's really bad. So we can... We okay. must be able to do something to, mm -hmm. to resolve that mm -hmm. so that more people can travel and enjoy the country. Uh, the connection between two airports, still very poor. Mm. Then we can do something about okay. those areas. So, and upgrading the level of English speakers in this mm -hmm. country, yeah. when so many foreign tourists are now coming to Japan, that may produce a return higher than the government, Japanese government bond rate. The Japanese government bond rate before BOJ did this crazy thing was yielding 0.7%. Mm. If, for example, a very well targeted program to improve foreign language capabilities mm. of Japanese people produced the social rate of return higher than 0.7%, then we should just do it. Mm -hmm. Robotics, AI would be also... Those, of course, would be... Okay. But the private sector is very good at that. Already. Mm -hmm. But if the government could help, and if that has a social rate of return higher than, let's say, 0.7%, okay. then government should be doing it. In France, too, there's so many projects that you can do with the kind of bond yield mm. the French government bond is yielding these days. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you.